Ah, yes. Welcome back, folks. I'm the one, the only, Hobo Tom. You might wonder why I'm wearing my cooking bib, my old Super Target hat. Well, it's because I had a request. I will always honor requests from coworkers or fans. Yes, if you want to see me cook something, let me know. I'll make a video of it. I'll show you how to make it as well. Um, for Ring of Honor, the final battle. What I did, I had to celebrate in some way. So I made a barbecue chicken sausage pizza. Pretty good stuff. Then this video is going to show you how to make it. I'll post this. Well, it should be up tomorrow for sure. we we'll do some processing. Again, I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Oh, yeah, this is a bonus because I didn't watch Raw because I had to close tonight. But, oh, what am I going to do that too? Shoot. I also have a whole bunch of thank yous to give out. I just might make a whole seer. Actually, let's see here. Let's see how many thank yous I can give out right now. I really should do that. So, well, actually, you know what? I want to mix things up a little bit. So please enjoy this video on how to make your own chicken sausage barbecue pan pizza. Enjoy. There we go. Good morning, folks. Let's see here. Getting things ready. It's about a little after 12.30 there by the clock. Today's the day of the final battle, so I'm going to make kind of a little special. I've had a request on how to make pizza. So I figure since I'm not doing a video for raw because I won't well, have to close that night, I make a little hobo cooking special. So one of the first things we have, we have some Fleischmann dry, active dry yeast. I have some warm, warm water going. There we go, plenty. You don't want hot water, you do not want to kill the yeast. I think let's see here. I forget if I need a cup. So I'm gonna make some pizza dough first. I have my bullseye barbecue sauce, which I'll put on the pizza. A very basic pizza crust let's see here. Use half a cup of water. So if I'm using two of these, there's one, the bread hook, stove area. Two, so two half cups equals one whole cup of water. And so the mixture it goes, nice and warm. I'm just going to add just a touch more. I know touch is not a technical term, but uh, my yeast needs some sugar though. You know, the kind of rack of stuff. Um, you can use kind of any sugar. Honestly, I don't know. I've had this forever. Let's see here. I'm going to set you up there. Is that a good view of it? Yeah, it's pretty close. I'll try to stay out of the picture. No one wants to see me. Really, again, very simply. Some sugar. Throw this out. This is just the start of a, really a whole day of stuff. Let's see, I'm gonna open this up over here because this does tend to come out quickly. So I've added my yeast to my sugar mixture. First thing that I wanted to do, yep, kind of plain looking. So I always like to give it a little swirl. to spread out some ingredients, kind of homogenize things. You know, it smells yeasty at least. I need to activate. Now the key to this is that you want the yeast to activate for at least 15 minutes. I think that's what it says on the package too. I don't know what it says on the package. I don't know. Maybe I ripped that apart. Oh, there we go. Chill and save time. Yep, there we go. Yeah, I don't, yeah I'll use a finger. 
it's warm, there's sugar in it. This is going to take about 15 minutes. I want to activate. Do you want the yeast to bloom? And then we'll be coming back and adding the pizza crust. And it's kind of a basic process, but yeah, you'll see how it's done. Let's see here. Make sure this is a good angle. You can see how stuff's done without seeing me. There's some wine. There we go. That's a decent angle. Okay, we'll be back. 15 minutes, folks. Bye. Right, let's get this lighting a little bit better. Okay, so it's been about 15 minutes. Yeah, a little bit longer. It's not an exact science. You can tell there's actually a visit. Oh, look at that. It bloomed. When you see all that puffy stuff, that means the yeast is blooming. So the next thing. Seriously, you don't necessarily have to see me. So there's the mixing pot. I need to add in. To shake it a little bit down so it doesn't explode when I open it up. Sometimes they tear off, sometimes they do not. Sometimes they tear in all kinds of weird directions. So very simply. Ooh, pizza dough. One bag. Whoop. that back there. I do need both hands. Second bag. See, this is what happens when you don't let it settle. It explodes on you. Into the mixing pot it goes, and then to the garbage, empty bags go. Right cheese pot? Here. Well, well, I don't know where my cat's running from. I got dusted, but there she is. Huh. Hey, cheese, but you want to say hi to everyone? Come here. No, don't show your butt. What's wrong? There we go. She spoke. She said hi to everyone. This is her way of saying hi. So now it's time. See how I can do this with one hand. There we go. Mine's pretty simple. It has a little hook mechanism. I had a hook mechanism. Where did it go? I have to rotate it somewhere. There you go, you push in. Arr, this has to be set there. So here, okay, I need both hands. There you go, hooks in now. Drop it down. Lock. Um, okay, if you wanna get some oil, you don't wanna add the oil first. What I like to do, speed settings. Oh, you gotta plug it in first. That would always help to plug it in, I guess. You gotta plug. Let's see here. Nice and slow, just wanna incorporate everything. But you can actually see it getting a little doughy in there. Slowly speed it up. You don't want to go full blast. You can see that everything being incorporated. One reason why you don't want to go full blast is that you don't want to kill the yeast off. Then you can tell. Then I have to pulse it. And then the pulsing gets the stuff on the sides off. In the back. You have this nice dough ball fish thing. Let me set the camera down so you can see that. Now, once you get this nice kind of dough ballish looking thing, kind of there. Um, I think the only thing you can do is you need to spoon very careful. Just want to get kind of it all around the edges because the dough will stick a little bit to the edges. I don't use flour or anything like that. Again, you get, there we go, the powdery stuff kind of st sticks there <laughs> into the sink. It goes. Then what you want, then what I like to do, and I think it just adds a little flavor, and I don't measure it. The oil goes in there, and that's the, well, organic olive oil. You can use whatever oil. Let go again, pulse it a little bit. Drop the pulse, get that 
stuff going. Nice and slow, steady. Let that work for a couple minutes. And I'm just going to put the olive oil away. And I think the olive oil mainly adds a little flavor, a little different texture to it. It makes it uh, more authentical. Here we have this. So I'm going to turn this off. Unlock it. Lift that up. See, it's going to kind of off the brick. Now this is when it gets kind of a little messy because you do want to keep as much on it as you can and have the sink running. I'm going to wash my hands a little bit. Take the bread hook off and you just kind of strip <laughs> strip as much dough off as you can. If you use flour you're probably not going to get as sticky. Yeah, you get kind of sticky. In fact, since I'm going to leave, I'm going to do my dishes anyway. Let's go straight in to the said dishwasher. And that's going to get cleaned off. So I remove the whole pot. And here you can see what the dough looks like for the most part. Again, we'll part there. They're always going to have it. Now I have to take a towel and I'll just cover it. And I'm not baking it because as you can see, that's the cloth on my oven. Actually, I don't know if you can see it because it's kind of dark. Right now I'm just going to remove one of the baking trays. And because the oven is probably the warmest thing here in this house, I'd say outside. It's kind of nice today, but there's bugs and who knows what else. This has to proof for at least one hour. The more it goes in, now it's kind of dark, dark, dry place. So it's in there. So it's going to proof up for about, oh, yeah, holiday decor. It's going to proof up for about one to two hours, depending how you feel and what you're doing in between. You really can't overproof it, so it's not that big of a deal. So, well, it's just 109. Right now, I know I need to be back by at least 3.30. So I'm going to go out and I'm going to get some, well, personal shopping done. Yes. Off to the Daytona Beach Flea Market. I only have a few books left and I need more books. So I'll be back. Okay, so it's gone a little bit longer than I expected, but still it's the two hours for the proofing period. So, let's go in the oven. Let's see how this thing proofed up. See, look at that. Much different looking. It's all bubbly. That means yeast are doing their job. That thing is very unstable. But yeah, it's nice. The yeast are doing their job. In the so here, my deep dish pizza pan. Well, the first thing I like to do, and this is just me, get some oil and some seasoning. Nature seasons. You can use kind of whatever seasoning you want. I think this is the way pizza has someone does it though. For some reason it tastes pretty much like it. First thing I do, get out some butter. You can use margarine. I use whatever is cheapest at the moment. It does not matter what you use it. No one cares kind of really because what all I do is I'm a napkin and I grease up the pan. Mainly this is so it doesn't stick too much. Gives it a little buttery flavor. Add something to the crust. Then you want to kind of get it all around. So that's, that, that's done. Into the dustbin it goes. little again seasoning on the pan. You do not want to add this to the bread mixture mainly because the salt will actually kill the yeast. Now add some olive oil, flavor, and again so it's a little bit more non-stick. trick with olive oil though, it will pull up in kind of one middle area. So you have to kind of work it back and forth. It's kind of boring and time consuming. I'm gonna put this down here. I'm just going to kind of work it. I'm going to cut 
covers the whole dish. It does take a while. This is probably like the longest process. In fact, I might need a little bit more. It all depends how big your pan is. Again, I really don't measure stuff. I just say, eh, that looks about right. Let's see. Eh, that looks about right. No. Yeah. There we go, just to speed up the process. If it pulls a little bit, it'll be okay. It's gonna spread out. There we go, now it's spreading out. And you can kind of see that nice little glistened area. Any part that's not glistening generally means it doesn't have it. It will pick up some of the seasoning, but it also will redistribute it. So you just want to shake that around as well. And any dry spots is where pizza is where dough will actually stick. You don't want to do that. So now that pan is nice and oiled, you can see it has a nice kind of shine to it. It means it's oily. This is part of the double proof. Turn the water on because I know my hands are going to get sticky. You can just kind of dump it in. Use your hands. Fold it in there. It's not necessarily going to stick to you that much, only because you already added the oil to it. But again, you definitely want to get as much as you can into it. Again, not much is actually sticking. So this goes in the wash. And then what I like to do, I do like to kind of wash my fingers a little bit. The water seems to keep it off you a tad bit. And this is a key thing. You want to use your knuckles and just spread it around. Because for some reason it sticks less to your knuckles than it does your fingers. Again, once you have that oil and you're not really tossing it like a true pizza dough. You're just kind of spreading things around. Oil is going to pool up. Don't worry about that. Eventually it will actually kind of bake off and soak into the crust. You know, and, and using your knuckles, I find, actually doesn't leave any kind of holes in it. It just takes a while to knead, like punch, punch, back, back, forward, punch, looking for my level up. And it does not necessarily have to be perfect, but it should, for the most part, kind of stretch out. If you remember, anything is going to proof up a second time in the wash. I was going to proof up a second time, and from that one dough ball, I'm going to go for the second proof, and I'll show you exactly what that looks like. And a second, or you can kind of see it for the most part. But yeah, see, see how different looks? Again, there's going to be some space around the edges, but that's okay. Remember, with making your own pizza, most of the time, it's just really a matter of like proofing stuff. This goes back into the oven. I'll kind of need that later. Again, yep, now that it's kind of cleared off. Again, I just like to put a towel over it. Keep some moisture, and you can wrap it up. You can untile, you don't need a towel, it doesn't really matter. And remember, you're not firing up the oven up, so it doesn't matter. It goes back in there. <laughs> probably another two, three hours. So we'll be back then. Bye. Okay, so it's been, wow, it's been a while. 7.16. That means that pizza's proofed up probably more than enough. Let's see, let's take a look. As I pull, no, this is a double proof pizza. Oh my goodness. Now see, remember what it looked like before? Now look at this. All proofed up, all nice and good. Now the next step is you have to par bake it. And by part baking, you're only cooking it partially because I just want this to solidify. I just want this amazing, beautiful crust to kind of solidify. And it's going to rise up a little bit. And then I'll show you how I make the crust formation. So, honestly, I always put my oven kind of high. I have it sit while well, it's pre-cooking now. 
So this amazing pizza, notice I'm not covering up this time. This is gonna go right in the oven. There's a pizza in the oven, Obadiah, Obadiah. There's a pizza going in the oven. There's a pizza for me. While that's happening, I'm gonna move that back. Oh, I almost lost a finger there, folks. That would not have been good. This goes over there. It goes there, there. So now what I'm going to do is, because I'm watching Ring of Honor, it's the final battle. That's on in the background. I'll figure out what match is on shortly. So I'll go there. I'll show you that. I have the mug out. I'll show you guys what I'm watching. There's my mug. Look at that most amazing mug. And oh yes, yeah, all the booze. All the booze, it's here. So I can see what's going on. Um, oh, they're having the TV title match already? What the hell? Oh no, they're just like going over matches. See, there's everyone. All the titles are on the line. So I have the crust part baking. Um, and the freezer. Again, you can get a couple you can either just fill that mug up, that mug will be filled with ice, because I prefer my ice for drinks. Let's see here, where did I put that ice cube? There we go. Look at that beautiful set of ice cubes. Super ice cubes. My freezer is full, because that's some Christmas stuff. And very simply, I'm just going to make myself 7-7s, seven because seven, I actually have to wake up. And I'm busting into my hurricane supply, because hurricane season is finally over. You use lemon lime soda. I always like ice in my drinks. It feels a little bit more civilized. I don't feel like a barbarian. I'm not a fan of drinking out of plastic bottles, but hey, whatever, whatever you can. Oh my goodness, is that Rocky Romero? So I'm gonna put my ice cubes in. And then Rocky Romero used to be a Ring of Honor for a while. I do want to make more giant ice cubes. Very simply, I do this old school style. There is that. They have all the. Let's fill this up quickly. They have all the people come back from Ring of Honor to say how great Ring of Honor was for its final show. I have no idea. So they're just doing a lot of talking. That's okay, I get to have my, my, my booze set up at least. Oh wow. Then probably by the time that's done, this will be good. Ugh, stick that in the freezer. Miranda El Rey. So let's see. So we have the woman's six. There we go. All oh, got yeah. amazing color. Look at that. So gorgeous that looks while the crust par bakes. Yeah, an amazing color. Look at this. This is something worthy for a Ring of Honor final show, folks. Look at this. Or should be. Let's have a sip. Well, that's perfect. So I'll be back. I'll show you the next up very short. Oh, I can show you this. I'm going to put this down.
Let's see here. So again, we'll scroll down. Yep, so there's me. Ha! Look yeah, at that. And you know what? The Allure is probably the most experienced when it comes to big match. Boobas. And so tonight, I'm sure that they're going to lean into that. Resurrect the winner's Resurrect. Let's So again, we're at that match right there, folks. I'm going to be back. I'm just filming something. Hall of Fame resume. Wait a second. There we go. So now, oh my goodness. Okay, so let's see here. So, um, the next thing, let's see here. Hopefully I should get this in. While the crust is part baking, I've made my drink. It's time to get some of the ingredients out, because once I start moving, it's going, once this pizza crust is kind of done, because the wrestling's now on, things are going to go very quickly. So, very simply, some chicken sausage. You can use any brand of chicken sausage you want. So you can use any brand of chicken sausage you want. I don't know. I just like the Italian style. It sounds good on the pizza. Um, honestly, only because I'm going outside and it's dark outside, I don't feel like fun. Oh, wait. There we go. That's the edge. So going outside to the to the grilling station. So here the hobo cat is right there. She's just taking her nap. Because it's... Look at that. We saw her earlier. She's just staring now. She has no clue what's going on. Yeah, have Ring of Honor playing I have my, my adult beverage of choice there. I'm going to take a quick trip the Hobo Grill, which I've already pre-fired up, so why don't I do that to get the grill nice and hot, too? It kills off any bacteria, lizards, spiders, snakes that live in it. I don't know. This is Florida. You have no idea. I have no idea what lives in this, this stuff. So, uh, there's the grill. Little well, light's on, but you can barely see it. Oh, there we go. Grill's on. Gas is on fire. Oh wow, I can feel that heat from here. Very simply, I mean, this is grilling sausage. That's all it is. Oh, I can already hear the sizzling. The sizzling and Brother Nero, yes. Now this stuff, remember, you're not going to park cook sausage. It is a very, very bad idea to par cook sausage, folks. Par cooking sausage generally means you're going to get sick. So I've always cooked my sausages thoroughly. I'll probably let those go at least 15 minutes. So that's going to be there. Again, at least 15 minutes. I don't care what sausage you're looking at. Oh, part of the Hobo Studio in the dark. That's where the Daytona Beach Wrestling takes place. Back into the main part of the house. You might be able to see Christmas lights across the way by the neighbors. So I'm going to catch some wrestling. But before I do that, so again, this is going to be a barbecue chicken sausage pizza. So this should actually be a fairly long match. So I can get a couple things ready. Um, as always, you pizza crust is in the oven. Um, I'm just using plain mozzarella cheese. I think it was the cheapest cheese I could find at the time. That, and of course, you can't have a barbecue pizza without barbecue sauce. And for some reason, bullseye, I don't know. It just seems right, bullseye barbecue sauce. Then as far as the topping goes, you just saw me put the um, chicken sausage on the oven. I'm going to top that up with some fresh balm mozzarella cheese. Secondary topping. And of course, you can't have any barbecue, what I think, without onion. Or some kind of like grill, grilled veggie on top or baked veggie on top. So very simple. I'm going to cut this onion up first because I don't want to chop the chicken sausage up. I have my good chef knife. Again, this is a very quick way to learn to cut an onion. Just don't cut fingers off. 
And then take the skin off. That ah, there. Very simply, what I do: take the edge of the blade, run it through the first layer. You just have to press down on it. And see, look at that. Most part, that's the first layer. That's what you don't need because that is stuff on it. Into the garbage bin it goes. I know some people say, "Oh, but how about it's not here? wasteful." Trust me, you do not want to eat onion skin necessarily. Then I'm just gonna. I'm gonna slice this up and keep this because I'm gonna actually probably. Ooh, I'm gonna use this tomorrow. I'm having an onion pizza. I'm gonna make an um, onion omelet. So I'm just gonna get some. Where is some saran wrap? So it's foil. Foil. How would I put the saran wrap in? There it is. I knew it was here somewhere. So much stuff on top of my refrigerator. Again, I'm just gonna break this kind of onion up. Actually, I'm going to put it in at half first. Just cut it in half so it's a little stringy. Oh, I already did cut that. Yeah, so there you can just kind of break it up nice and neat. Again, if you love onions, put more onions on. If you don't like onions so much, you can put peppers, anything you want. Put some bits on there. Remember, the pizza is not necessarily the biggest thing that, that, that there is. I might actually, only because I enjoy onion, I might put a little bit more onion on than you might. That is entirely up to you, and I hope nothing falls off that refrigerator, because that's being, well, most of that stuff's being balanced very precariously. Well, the other thing, um, you don't want to necessarily keep the onion core. It's probably the smallest part of the onion. You don't really need it. Again, onion core, you don't need it that much. And I might turn the other light on because I just realized it's kind of dark. But again, I'll save that for tomorrow. Put that in. Try not to waste anything. Because I have to pay my own money and I don't have that great of a job. Initially, I try to save as much as I can and repurpose it for later. That's the smart thing to do. Okay, so the pizza actually beeped at me, so that's done. Onion goes in the refrigerator for tomorrow. Onions and eggs doesn't sound bad. Break that up. It's going to leave it right there on the counter since I cleaned the countertop off too. So that's all good. That should be enough. To have all the stuff. Again, just going to throw the cores out. Yeah, probably about 10 more minutes or so. Let's see here. I can, tell, I can actually tell by the timer of this thing. Yeah, probably about... Eight more minutes, so I'm gonna go watch some wrestling. Again, I set the oven to about 420. Very quickly, let's take a look at that crust. See how it's see how it's developing. It's getting whoa! Look at that flash of steam. So wow! I'll be back right now. It's time to pull the pizza out of the oven. Probably like right after I do that, I'm gonna get the sausage out. I'm gonna show you how I prep stuff. So I'm still gonna leave the oven at temperature. I need a hot glove though. Do not grab hot pans with bare hands. Use a hot glove, folks. Have some common sense. So now this pizza, ah, steam. It's par-baked, so it's still a little bit soft inside. It will come away from the edges, so it's actually easier to cut that way. What I do to make my edges on a pan pizza, because it's still gonna fluff up a little bit, honestly, I just use the back side of a spoon, and let's see, I'll show you a little bit of it. I just press down. You see how that kind of crust breaks? You can see it's a little bit gooey on, still on the inside. It's not fully crusted up yet. It's kind of pressed down a little bit. First going around the edges, trying to make kind of a crust. We're just missing the 10-man tag action, so. Again, if you have this on a circular, do not grab hot pan with bare hands. That's very bad. Very, very, very bad. So then after that, you just kind of press everything else down. So that's the formation of the crust. So now, our crust is still going to bake. I'm going to put that in. Honestly, this is when the timing becomes very important. So now it's going to bake like that for like, honestly, like 10 more minutes. Everything else is like 10 minute spots. So this is, so that goes back in the oven. Sorry, only because you want to let that finish cooking. Um, the sausages should be done now. I rotated them. 
I just have to get a dish to get them out. Again, holding hot sausages in your bare hands is a very bad idea. And I don't like because right now, um, with Ring of Honor, the cat's still asleep. We have the 10 minute action. There's my drink I've had a little bit of. Let's see here. Will Rollins for Valley, yes. David Maldonado, welcome back. David Maldonado, very quickly, you are on the way to being in the Daytona Beach Bonfight League. Oh, yes, yeah, so hi to everyone. Because I'm making. Because here, well, at least your name. David Maldonado. They grabbed the wrong. They grabbed the wrong. Look at, look at. Look at what Flip says, get out, get out. Flip says, what? What's going on? Oh, look at her. She looks, oh, the Pier City Brawler wants a piece of that. I want to see it. I want to see it. Tag made. So we'll be back. Tag made. Oh, it gets jumped from behind. Let's see it. Yes, the Pier City Bruiser, folks. Let's see, we're going to head out and actually get cooking done now. So again, that stuff got, got in, that's only going to take, actually, I should probably just leave that in for five minutes. Then The thing is, you don't want it to cool down, because then you have to recook it again, and then it gets soggy and it's a pain in the ass. So we're going back out here to the grilling station. Sausage should have been done. A good solid 15 minutes out here. First thing I like to do, because I need to conserve gas, conserve gas, go down here, turn off flame. This thing is hot enough where pieces are still glowing. I always like it because maybe I can show you a little bit of this nice char on them. To me, that's pretty good. I'll show you inside. It's pretty dark out here. And I'm just taking them off the hot grill. Let the grill cool down naturally. Oh no, do not lose one. Do not lose sausage. That's a bad idea. Slippery sausage is burning. Again, show you what they look like. Make sure the cat can't get out that way because that would be bad I'm not searching all over Daytona Beach in the night for a black and white kitty cat. I did that once and thankfully she was still in my yard. I could see the white, but see that's what the chicken sausage looks like. That's what a cheese looks like. So here, I have the onion all set, I have a cutting board ready, a different perspective. The reason why I cut the onion first is because you can always put, just in case this wasn't done, you can always put raw veggies on first versus cooked meats. You can take a sausage here. Now, depending on how you like to slice it for pizza, I like a little length. I like to slice it, you guys see this? Diagonally. It's okay if it falls apart. It's, you're not making, it's going to all go down the same tube anyway. And so you can see that, that actually looks really good. Next sausage. First cut, once it gets to the crust, again, you can tell where it's kind of been crustified. Again, sometimes it takes practice, sometimes you just get lucky. If you get the little bubble space, it always breaks apart. Again, I wouldn't be that concerned about it. I want to see Danhausen in this in the smash. That would have been funny. Again, nice diagonal cuts. Well, that was a good one. Again, you can tell it's brown in the middle. It's not pink nor white, which means it's done. Again, par baking sausages is very bad. Oh, sausage on the countertop, that's fine. So that's all set, so that's good. We're now going to turn our attention, so I have kind of, for the most part, my toppings all set. Now I'm going to turn our attention. We're going to have a piece. Let's see how it tastes. That's pretty good. 
Now, uh, back for our pizza. Good salt, part baked crust. Then I filled that spoon out. Go ahead and set spoon over here. Pour barbecue sauce on top. So barbecue sauce on top, you spoon, spread around. And again, the reason why if you have that crust, it's not going to go down into the pan. That's good. And again, it's all up to you how much sauce you want to use. Use a little sauce, you can use a lot of sauce. I do like to define my crust a little bit. That's pretty good for me. Again, if you have different tastes, hey, go for it. This is really basic. This is kind of basic stuff. Um, barbecue sauce is going back in the refrigerator. There's still plenty left. You know that tomorrow. Who knows? Barbecue chicken something. Or I could just use that. Now I use that in conjunction. Now I want to use a mozzarella cheese. Again, this is just really my base cheese. Again, mozzarella. Um, however you want to do it, I like to do it straight from the bag. Nice pile on, spread out then by hand. Again, if you're cooking for others, you can use a spoon. Depending on how finicky they are. Some people are more odd about that than others. And just kind of brush, I just brush it along. Because if you notice, my hand for the most part actually stays nice and clean. So I have my base layer down. This is organic stuff. For some reason, the organic organic cheese was cheaper than the other cheese. I'm going to save that for tomorrow. Again, I try to, if I'm going, I'm not going to use the whole thing. I'm not going to just throw it out on a whim. It, it'll get used tomorrow. Right now, this is what the basic pizza looks like. I'm at 400. I'm going to keep it at that. Things are looking good. The toppings are all set. Back in the oven it goes, and we'll come back in 10 minutes. I'm going to go enjoy some wrestling. I shall return. And all my toppings are all set. I'll be back. So right now, whoa, cheese is really melted. So now this is going to be quick. So again, it kind of like steamed up. I think it took a little too long. So... It's not terrible, mainly because remember, this is just the first layer. A lot of that, and I'm just going to use this fork. That'll be fine. You see some of that crust coming out. Now it's time for the toppings. Chicken sausage. You can put this on however you feel like. And if I do have excess chicken sausage left, it's honestly going on food tomorrow. So I don't mind if there's going to be a little bit left over. I wanted to make sure there was enough to cover this pizza. So you have the chicken sausage. Oh, just a little bit left over. That's not too bad. Some onion. And you can hear, and I'll show you guys a little bit. We have the... Ooh, maybe I'm cut too much on you. Maybe I thought this, why do I think this pan was bigger than this? I honestly don't know. Yeah, so actually I still have enough, so I'm going to just put that in a little container. Again, waste not, want not. Sausage. In a container. I already have still onion, chopped onion left. That's okay by me. Again, waste not, want not. Goes in the refrigerator. It's not that big of a waste anyway. Oh, I do have to pull, oh, sure, I have to pull bacon up for tomorrow. And then finally, again, if I'm not gonna use all the ball mozzarella, I'm cool with that. I'll use the majority of it though. And I'm not going to wait that long. 
Honestly, the only thing you're missing, you're right behind me, I'm just opening up the packaging. If you don't know how, if you don't know how to open up a packaging of ball mozzarella, I don't know what you're doing watching my show. Spread that out. Oh wow, this looks freaking amazing. Nice little ball there. So I have the base. Oh yeah, nicely. That crowd should be freaking packed. This is the last Ring of Honor show. And if I have some ball mozzarella left over for, for tomorrow, I can live with that. You don't have to use anything. I mean, just don't. Let's see, put that there. Because remember, it's going to bake and spread out. You know, put that away. It just means I have more for tomorrow. I'm fine with that. I have to make breakfast for myself anyway. Got have a nice chicken sausage, cheese and onion, barbecue omelet, bacon, and toaster shrooms. Back in the oven it goes. And we shall come back literally in like 10 minutes and this thing will be done. Be back. If you can see, right there in the oven. Okay folks, so now it's 8.30. Remember, I started this whole process right about 1 o'clock. Let's take a look at the pizza. Oh yeah, look at that, the onions. Whoa, look at all that steam, come on. That means you know something good's gonna happen. A little steamy. Let's see here. Let's see what this pizza looks like. Mozzarella balls kind of melted in their ball shape, so that's good. Pizza crust is golden brown. Oh, look at all that sizzle. Oh, look at that. That looks freaking amazing, folks. Let's see here. The only problem I ever have is cutting pizza. I have my nice clean pizza wheel here. Let's see here. Ooh, the crust is done. That's always good. The crust is nice and crunchy in the middle. See, I'm gonna cut this in like, I figured, that, yeah, this is like a good six piece. Seriously, so that's four. You know, I might as well make eight pieces out of it. It's gonna be eight small pieces. It's not too bad. Actually, this is the amazing thing. When you make a pizza like this, like the best thing about this, putting the oil in the bottom of the pan, whoa, I took a whiff of that. Is that the pizza actually moves pretty easily. So that goes in said dishwasher. And let me start to pose. So again, you can see, oh, look at that delicious pizza. You can see it kind of separates from the pan easily. So it doesn't stick at all. so I can have the money shot of it. Or the pizza shot of it. Probably the same money shots. Probably a bad thing by all those that don't understand people. Bunch of losers and hosers that they are. Triangular, let's see how easily this comes out. Oh my goodness. So simple to come out. Look at that. I'm gonna put a couple pieces on the plate. I'll put three pieces to start with. Again, oiling the plate just makes it so much easier. Like with any pizza, sometimes the toppings will fall off. Oh, look at that cheese coming off. Oh, stretch cheese. Stretch cheese is awesome cheese. Again, you can cut it up to as many pieces as you want. You load up the toppings. Sometimes they do fall out. That's not, but that's true of any pizza. You can go to Pizza Hut to have things that fall off. Rogue onion. Let's see how rogue onion tastes. Oh, rogue onion tastes amazing. Look at that perfect pizza shot. Again, 
And that's pretty sweet tasting too. And drink. Again, that's cooking with a hobo. I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Let's see here. Check out some Ring of Honor action while we're at the edit. Um, I'd like to thank everyone for watching. If you have any questions, please like, share, comment, subscribe. Go to my channel. Oh, rope break number two. There's some stuff going on there. A bunch of stuff going on. If you want to see me cook anything, though, if you have a request for the Hobo Kitchen, please say so. If it's within reason, if you want, like, me to, like, grill up flaming on, eh, eh, not going to happen because I can't afford it. But if you want to see, hey, I heard about this recipe. Can you show us how to make that? I'll be like, yes, I can. So, again, I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Please like, share, comment, subscribe. I'm going to have me some pizza. Bye. And now, a seer. Even though this is kind of the end. I hope everyone enjoyed that video. I hope you guys potentially learned something. At least you know how to make pizza now. Seer. So I actually have a whole bunch of thank yous to go through. Uh, the past week, a whole bunch of people have been shouting out to me. So I have to give props where props are due. And I'd be doing this in two counts. You know what? Meow meow fuzz. I like that name. You just got a six count, sir. Starfish four, uh, sea starfish four. I don't know. With all those arms as a starfish, you're just a master of the air guitar.
Carol Potter. I have no idea who you are, but you are just chilling out with your briefcase boombox. Gallagher Tunney, you, sir, can crawl out of here. See if I can read my own handwriting today. Nick the release con. You sir just win by dirty pen. Mr. Azerbaijan, you, sir, are a member of the El Generico band. Also, Rag Fallon. Holy shit. There's a long one. Ricky Nick Sticks, a.k.a. The Crow, you know that Jordan Grace has back. Oh my god, Becky, look at her butt. I like big butts and I cannot lie. Cancer on smack. You're that luchador on a forklift.
Tupac alive in Cuba. You, sir, are just relieving, reliving Mundo Madness. Cap cook, you just know that Natalia is superior. David Maldonado, you sir are very quickly on your way to the Daytona Beach Bum Fight League. But right now, you're Nikki Cross's tag team partner. Wrestling with art, you sir, know you're kung fu fighting. Barbara Hutcherson, oh my FG. Late night architect. You just told Natalia to take it all off? You told Nikki Cross to take it all off? Nix, you sir can walk out of here.
Mecca Prianto LUP. You, sir, got tossed. And because I want to finish these last two up, Strider, be careful of the Shibata headbutt. And Foffy, it's time to break, break, break. And this Yano's for you, sir. And probably the final thing, I should probably tell you how I did. So, I did not do good. I got five, oh, I did do okay. I got five out of nine matches in the right. Yeah, five out of nine matches. Let's see here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. No, there were ten matches. Yeah. So I got 10 matches right. I got my Stone Cold Lock right. Ooh. Uh, that wasn't that much of a snooze match. Let's see here. And what was my match of the night? I think my Stone Cold Lock. Oh, the TV title. Was that my match of the night? I don't know. Whatever it was. I got my soul code lock right. So that means I actually guess 10.5. I guess 5.5 out of 10 right. Yes. 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 So that means I guess if Stephanie McMahon Helmsley was in charge of Ring of Honor, I'd know exactly what she's thinking. And yeah, you know what? I might edit this video tomorrow. It's getting late and I just... I don't know. We'll see. Other than that, I'd like to thank everyone for watching. A little bit about this week's schedule. Um, later today, because this is probably going up Tuesday sometime, um, I'll be doing my typical live review. My live kind of somewhat reaction to NXT. and we'll see what happened. The departure of Johnny Gargano. And Kyle O'Reilly. Wednesday, I'm going to try to do, again, a uh, reaction of Winter is Coming. We'll see. I don't know. I'm off to Jacksonville that day. I'll see if we get home in time. we get stuff done. Thursday night, typical Impact Pro Wrestling. We'll see what happens there. Friday. Ooh, Friday I can do two videos. Again, I'll be doing my live, my live reactions to SmackDown and AEW. Saturday, there's no wrestling. Sunday, there's no wrestling. Wow. I gotta relax for a while. I have to work, though. But yep. So, again, I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Oh, yeah. Um, and then Christmas week. Again, it'll be... I don't think I'm doing anything Monday. I think I have to close Monday. No, I think I open Monday. I don't know. I'll figure out Christmas week soon. I have other stuff to get done.